forget the guy's name. The guy who did the uh, the crocodile Dundee one. Yeah, that was that was that was my favorite for sure. Yeah. <coughs> It was harsh, but I was still pretty close. Yeah, I like that. I it. Uh, everything's like, do you, what do you want first? Do you want black belt first, or do you want... Uh, Whatever. Oh, you think, oh, wow. Well, uh, okay. You want to go with the purple belt killer? <laughs> <laughs> Zach? Shoot, I try and stay as close to the center as possible. Or? Uh, yeah, as long as we can see you, we're going to be okay. Are you good there, Joe? Being good. Twenty-three seconds. <laughs> Twenty-three longer than I expected. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brian, let's stop recording. <laughs> let's stop recording. Not a big deal. Listen to it a little bit.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, if you want to take a break, take a break, Craig. <coughs> want to take a break? No, no, there's two more. Two more? But, yeah, that's right. But, no, he... he oh, three more. No, but man, I can take a yeah, break. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay he's next. Yeah, no, take it. We got here. He was about to take a break. So take a break. <laughs> can I get in there? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Take a break, Greg. I need to. Yeah, because the, ne the next two are, 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 are going to be. Do you need some towels, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to need some water? Mm. Yeah, we're How was it, Greg? Good. 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 Yeah, good. I'm still recording on this. That's cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, keep recording. Yeah, yeah clean. Yeah, you're testing out my gas tank. Puerto Rico's crazy from the time, huh? Yeah. I'll have you know, like, you're one of the only people I've ever seen tap me on a triangle. Oh, really? He normally yeah. bases Normally, he doesn't tap for triangle at all. Like. He was being kind to me that time. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, oh, maybe I can pass if I get in the triangle. <laughs> I feel like I had a solid 23 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more of a... It's more of a... The duration is not... It's not about the yeah. amount of time. It's the quality. <laughs> a space shuttle yeah. launch is like one yeah. minute. You yeah. remember it for the rest of your life. That's right. Yeah. Nice. You could have written my arm the first 10 seconds and he like, let him take a rest. Yeah, like, oh, That's yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> the last. Oh, you get your joke too. Right? Hey, a, a nice tape. <laughs> Dessert. I always worry about who's going last to say themselves. He's studying. There's always a crazy tough one that comes out from the bathroom <laughs> in the very last round. Travis <laughs> 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 yeah, Tra oh, I said Travis in, in no time. <laughs> <laughs> when your feet All of us three times and then so Travis much, at the very end. So yeah. far yeah. over there right now. <laughs> Travis wearing a big mustache comes out. <laughs> Gordon this crushes is, his way in. Steven <laughs> Travis. Stan Stevens. Yeah, Stan Stevens. <laughs> All right, should we keep going? Yeah, make sure. I'm going to say you guys cut on his nose and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a second, wait a second. Wait. Oh, you got it? Yeah. All right, cool. Come here.
Are you good? Take, I'm a in the yeah, take room. it over. Yeah, why, why don't you, why do drag the rest to zero? Can you do it something like that? Hmm? Just fuck it up. Just leave it. So, so guys, if you have anybody in the group has any uh, question to Craig, let's take a advantage here while he's resting, and you guys can ask whatever you want. So, I have a question. Uh oh. <laughs> well, it seems like a lot of your strategy is we're not like this isn't gonna be on anything here, right? It, no, it seems like it seems like a lot of your strategy when you're playing guard is from the knee shield attacking the arms to draw reaction. Uh, up? Is this the case? And one, yeah. What's your like entry when the guy's rolling up? What, what are you kind of looking for on the hips? Any sort of connection yeah. against stronger guys, I really might have to lock it down. But usually I get this and you come to that down. And I'm using my foot in the back of this armpit to get you in the angle I can. Sometimes this way, and I might roll through real fast. Or if you push back in, I really want. You're way over the top. Let's see. To look here. Depending on who you are, only depends on what I do next. If I feel like this is rare, I'll lock you down any way I can. If I feel like it's a common entry, I might start looking for elevations to attack the inside. Let's see. So Gary, you're just getting your weight over the head. Or sometimes, or sometimes hoping to, uh, if I get the sound of it. A great reaction for me would be you fall back to this hip. You can attack in this, and I can pull up to sit through. So, as the bottom guy, you're looking to open them up as much as possible, just through the core and the hip, yeah. or even just this knee. Yeah. I'm like, if I stay a little here, but I give space here, are you still going to be able to? Yeah, I'll commit to that. I'm going to keep my knee. A little more up top this time. If I keep it too low, yeah, you see, I don't have much with this grip. That's but it. if I get this grip, I get my knee here. Now we've opened up a whole lot more. Right. Tags. That makes sense. All right. Well, right. Craig, can you, can you show the uh, the finish you did on Funny Boy here? <laughs> I can't remember what he did. It was kind of like his, his shin was across your chest, and you sort of pressed it in. Remember how he set it up? No. <laughs> uh, we were sitting, and then he was he was, he was inverted on his stomach. And his yeah, we kind of went yeah. here, and and basically you, you almost seemed to do like a like it was almost like he did a sleeper hold on his Achilles. It was I don't I, I couldn't really see it the angle. He did a double outside Ashi, and he was doing the running man Sorry. and your heels. I think we sort of like I was trying to think, set it back to fifty. I think we were sort of here. Yeah. yeah, and I started to turn. Yes, we almost ran into the camera, and then and I ran over here. And his <laughs> the, the shoelace of his foot got onto your chest. So no. Yeah, but you see, I don't. Obviously, I could attack the back there. Yeah, it's probably a great option, but if we're looking at the legs, I'm not going to roll over my forehead. I'm going to try and, like, beer and ball on to try and re-expose the hill. Sure. So this is what I was looking for, and I think you reacted. Yeah, I think I pulled, and I came inside of your hip. Yeah. Yes. And I landed here. And now, is it, what, what is that? Is that a reverse heel hook? Yeah, so you see, I've got a pretty weak grip here for maybe butterfly. Or a regular gable. Yeah. He's saying I shouldn't attack. <laughs> <laughs> the knee was almost slipping out. But I went with this reverse grip just to create a bit more of a wedge under the heel. Uh, and I'm reaching for my bicep. Oh, okay, okay. So it, it almost looked like a sleeper hold, but it really is. It's, it's a reverse heel hook because you have the counter force there. And uh, a lot of, I think a lot of people make this mistake is they go elbow to elbow. But what I actually want to do is I want to pull my elbow under their heel. And it helps if I open this hand up. Yeah. If I hold it down in a way that looks more visually secure, you see my elbow is coming outside. Can you guys switch on the camera so I can see they're from this way? Every right. time this hand comes up, I feel the pressure yeah. a lot more. So you see, if I went elbow to elbow, yeah. my elbow is slipping out from under the heel. Yeah. If I pull my elbow back under the heel, oh, we're actually creating okay. a bit more of a, a wedge. So yeah. visually it looks less secure, but it's a... Uh, so if he's rolling around and being slippery in there, it's kind of a way to secure him and finish. Yeah, that was very close to slipping out. I think maybe the wedge caused a, uh, a tap, but I think it could go either way there. Cool. So, Craig, uh, Eric Girard is asking if the Zigard is the best for take the light. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if I'd say it's the best, but it's probably a guy people have 
the least amount of experience dealing with leg entries from. Yeah. So probably uh, from a strategy point of view, yes. And also, I'm trying to play it on that offside, so I'm really yeah. I'm making them pass left leg forward, which confuses people. Uh, again. Yeah. Then Andrew Krogan is asking if you do, if you do prefer going for leg attacks from the bottom or top. Um, I think it really comes down to who the opponent is. There are some opponents out there that uh, you may not get on top at any point in the match. So if I were to get on top, in maybe a rare instance, I would do everything I could to remain on top. There are elite level guys out there that uh, if you get the top position, you're pretty confident you're going to win. Yeah. Some people are still one dimensional in their top game. So against a person like that, for sure, I would be trying to remain on top, just work positions and passes and a pass to the back. Against someone maybe Maybe even against the same person, if I was down on points, I might be looking near the end of the match to start sitting back for legs. It really depends on the opponent. If I think they have a, a big vulnerability for their legs, then I'll definitely attack that other position. I got it. So uh, then <coughs> Daniel Tildar is asking if it, would you say the order of attack is reverse heel hook, heel hook, knee bar, then toe hold? I think he's mentioned like the, oh, the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I would definitely say the. The inside of the inverted heel hook would be uh, number one for me, yep. then probably the knee bar, and then I would say probably the outside heel hook and the toe hold, about the same. Oh, yeah. Can I ask a question about your toe hold? I noticed that you didn't go to the bicep grip, you were kind of digging your fist in instead. Was that on purpose? Um, from the... When you, one of the guys you did a toe hold to. It's me. It wasn't against me, it was one of them. It was me. <laughs> yeah, you grabbed the toe hold and then you kind of dug your fist into your forearm instead was it of... Grip? I didn't remember, I didn't notice the other hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to really get a, I guess, a more acute angle. And I feel like sometimes when I grab a regular toe hold grip, it's more rotational. Like I feel like I'm trying to drag cross body, which is the way you could go to straighten your leg a little easier, right? But if we come back, I want to try and stuff the toes this way. So sometimes if I get the grip and it's slipping, I'll try and put my um, elbow on top of the toes here. So now if you feel like you're trying to extend your foot, it comes on very tight. It's a very similar grip to a. Uh, some people would grab the heel and they'll drop their elbow in front of the toe and then they'll secure the bicep. Just make it harder for you to straighten your leg. Nice. Dan, right, somebody uh, else can come get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One more here, Craig. Yep. So, uh, Tony Tofolo is asking, Craig, do you have any special strategies when, for when you're open? Is your, in your half grip, but sitting the weight back and not engaging? They aren't really pressing, and it's hard to get under far, under the far leg. I think the guy's on your half grip, but he's kind of like backing up, and he's not letting you go underneath. So what do you? I saw you going for Kimura. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's sort of what happened with the Team Spriggs match. Yep. So uh, against Spriggs, I was so worried about him being evasive. I rather than playing a high knee shield, I played a, no, a low knee shield to try and trap his leg in this position, so he'd be. Um, sort of unstable when trying to pull out. Again, someone that I think was more pressuring, I'll probably keep it a little bit high now, looking to use my toes and the uh, tricep grip to pull them over the top. But against, I think what you mean is you're an opponent like this, uh, it's gonna be very difficult here um, to start opening up if I just shoot straight for the leg. I guess uh, what happens like, I mean, Mateus did it to me. You see, Wagner Hoshi used this grip very well. As he reached for the legs, they start framing on the, the throat here, right? So I really have to start using two on ones here. I can be a little uh, more open against some guys that are just being evasive because they're so far from a passing position. So usually I'm looking for two on ones to start destabilizing guys. Usually I'll grab this wrist, the uh, underhook preferred wrist, just in case they did start to slide forward and get a grip. So I'll usually start with two on ones on this wrist and when they up, use the other hand to strip this grip, we can start bringing them cross body to start getting to these legs here. So we really have to open it up with grip fighting. Another thing guys do is they'll come to the Z, but they'll keep everything super low. They'll be sitting here. For this, I really like to start looking to attack this arm. So again, a problem would be if Isaac were to get a cross face on the hook. So I want to avoid this at all costs. So when we're playing here, I'm always going to be playing a two-on-one on this side of the body. So now really all Isaac has is his sort of low underhook here and his weight. And I'll start trying to get two, uh, two thumbs on the same side. 
Stop trying to rotate the wrist and attack here. Start attacking the Kimura. Even if the Kimura is not close at all, they rip their arm out. We've got a clear path to our underhook here. I just have to sort of get them reacting in a safe way. Yeah. Right? It can be a, can be a problem against guys like Pahara. <laughs> so, and uh, then uh, Harnack Birin is asking if there is another DVD incoming. So there is. Yeah, can yeah, you yeah, explain what's next? We got another DVD coming up, a bit of a, some updated strategies for dealing with the leg lock game. Uh, I think some things have changed slightly over time. So we'll do some updates, some counters, specifically like uh, counter leg locks and counter back takes for this one. And they also like, uh, you're gonna comment over the exploring that you just did, right? For sure, yeah. And we're gonna do some analysis of some of the strategies I'm using here to uh, to get to the legs, especially on, you can see like a wide range of opponents with different strategies to them. I got it. And another uh, purpose, the clip in the selfie here. So Eric <laughs> Girard is complaining, Bernardo, stop playing with the phone. So what do you want to do next? Okay, Should we do some more rounds? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys gotta take it easier on me. Though. I gotta get 24 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, 24 <laughs> seconds. 24 <laughs> seconds. Safe four and a half. We're only in the mad and the best. Healthy pop. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. This is toes. Oh that was like a, a good knuckle focus. <laughs> <laughs> that was sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Check it was in. That was toes. Uh, it was uh, uh, That's on the uh, Fanatics health insurance, right? <laughs> <laughs> is that now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
I hate beer tonight. <laughs> I thought about it, man. <laughs> I didn't think about it quick enough. <laughs> Ah, that was pretty. Are you doing okay, <laughs> Just as I expected. It's like a mongoose. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. Mike's up. <laughs> Dang, he's got a kryptonite over here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any uh, questions? Uh, so guys, if anybody has any question here to Craig Jones, this is the time. Who was most challenging for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the question's about us. He knows who he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you go, how do you go stop? <laughs>
He's, so, been, he's been on that uh, Golden Ryan lifting program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive program. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm surprised because normally he doesn't tap for triangle and he got oh, really? He doesn't tap at all. Like, I, I would close I, like 20 triangles on him. He's shooting a video. I promised him a cut if he tapped. I got a question. So, you obviously you played a little bit between the high knee shield, the low knee shield, a lot. What's your general strategy for both of those, opening the guy up, dealing with pressure? What are you thinking where you're thinking, I need to move between one or the other? I think if I need to hang on to someone and keep someone close, the low knee shield probably works a little better. If I want to uh, get some distance, start looking to come underneath, I'll probably open it up a little, start looking to invert. But the constant, it's a constant game of bait. It'll probably cost me one day, leaving my leg high there. I, I'm safe as long as I get under their leg. If they start to attack that top leg, I have to be ready to come on top. But it's a constant game of bait. They want to pressure. They know I'm going for legs. They see my legs vulnerable there. It's a constant game of them thinking about attacking that leg. Okay. okay. What would you say is the progression where someone should start off learning leg locks? And where should they start? And where should they, like, how, how should their learning progress? You have to be able to set a path. Like, which moves? Um, I'd probably start looking at uh, being able to finish with straight ankle locks, yeah. um, understanding how to control those positions. Okay. And then, uh, do you want to show a couple of key aspects? Joe, would you want to jump in? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah you got it. I would, like, if I started, uh, I guess, understanding the straight ankle lock positions, if you're a single lift, just mainly from uh, my days playing in the gi, like, wanting to be confident to be able to control someone okay. with this single leg X position. Confident and looking for the far leg, and then really progressing from here, having the ability to get entries to positions like this, and also being able to hang on to my opponent, and obviously being cautious of uh, their controls. And then one of the uh, a great uh, progression would be to start understanding X guard, yep. and the ability to off balance my opponent to put their hands on the floor. Obviously, once my opponent's hands are on the floor we can start looking to uh, get to the saddle position, which would be an elevation. And we'll start looking to attack this inside leg. And then as well, a lot of great um, entries to the legs come off sweep attempts. So if, uh, if you drop your knees, like a great one, a lot of people have trouble attacking from butterfly guard. But say we do get a sweep, when I have trying to fly it off, is when I start looking for the back step. The back step's a great control position, great position to get on top. But a lot of people have trouble entering uh, from the reverse X from the butterfly guard. Yeah. So if you keep playing your sweeping game, we use the sweep attempts to back step would be one of the okay. uh, one of my preferred methods getting there. Cool. So Andrew Krogan is asking, how did you readjust your hips when your opponent either turns or begins to stand? From uh, from what position is that, Mr. Andrew? From which position? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question while we're waiting on Andrew. Yeah. Uh, so, so you mentioned the straight ankle lock, but in good competition, you really don't see the straight ankle lock even really attempted anymore because just nobody taps to it. Is it yeah. because of a lack of execution or a lack of breaking in the in the submission itself? Is there a problem in the submission itself? You know what? I would say the problem with the straight ankle lock is that. Uh, you use a lot of energy going for it. So I liken the outside heel hook a bit to the straight ankle lock because I only want to go for either of those submissions if I've seen my opponent tap to them in the past. For me, the straight ankle lock, obviously, there's no point uh, taking the gamble that they're going to tap when you might lose an awful lot of energy going for it. And for me, I sort of think about the outside heel hook the same way, traditionally attacking that outside heel hook in that I risk getting counter leg locks, my back taking on my guard half and attempting it. So it's not realistic for me to uh, really attack those positions. But again, I think you need to understand those to understand the leg lock game as a whole. Understand uh, how to control someone with a straight ankle lock and also how to play the outside heel hook game. And quite often, uh, when you progress through that, you can find some uh, other leg locks in there, like using the outside heel hook to set up insides, but not just making that the primary focus. Then Andrew replied here. So, how did you readjust your hips when your opponent either turns or begins to stand from Ashi or Sado? 
Oh, it's in the saddle? Um, so, so if we got the saddle and we're like, uh, we're dealing with this outside, uh, we're dealing with them climbing the hill right. As she knows, that Andrew thinks the problem yet. Because obviously we come back to the uh, square position, very rarely do we end up securing the position, able to attack the hill. So what, and again, we're gonna go over this in more detail when we do, uh, do I guess the follow-up to the DVD, is the, the problem of attacking this position, right? So when we land here, my opponent simply turns, they hide the hill, very difficult to attack there. And you can see like, uh, say, in Philippe Penneverse Gordon, guys are coming up with very creative ways to counter this game, as if I were to roll over my knees and my forehead chasing down the hill. That's where Penneverse attacked the back day. So what I'm <coughs> looking to do is really come back to a 50, 50 guard position. And that is, I'm gonna keep my uh, elbow in front and I'm trying to secure under the knee here. When Isaac turns, he almost wants to get some height. So you see how his hip starts coming up, his near hip here. What I want to do is I want to place my foot on it to slow it down. You see, we can limit his ability to climb. And then I'm going to do a Birambolo roll. And you see, we re-attack the knee, re-expose the heel. I don't really want to finish from this position because Isaac leans up and he hand flies. So if we come back a step, the second I expose this heel, as he starts to turn, I turn with him. And you see how we maintain the distance between us. And we get a great position to attack the uh, inside hill. Like obviously, we've got their knee pointed towards the sky. So for me, it's not so much remaining in the saddle, but I guess switching back to 50-50 as a means to counter them hiding the hill. Dan, uh, Rod Pony asking, how do you deal with the steam of luck? if our opponent manages to go for it when you are using the knee shield? When we're using the knee shield? Um, I think it's a lot more popular from the Eva and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, it can still do. When I'm playing the... Uh, so you can see my foot's really on the outside here. I'm not having a deep knee shield. When my knee shield's deep, they're much closer to yeah. securing this grip. So my knees, generally speaking, Always on this outside hip, very far from them being able to catch the esteem. Or it's tucked up under the armpit, again, very far for them to try and get that crossbody. So I'd say the most common esteem a lot from this position is when people play with a foot on the hip and a knee here. If they're playing knee shield like this, that's where we're going to start having problems. And if I, my foot does slide crossbody, but as it slides, I use the knee to push them onto their hands, right? So the yeah. esteem of now no longer a threat. Yeah. So I'd say it's more a problem with uh, how you're playing the guard than a problem of the guard. Yeah. And then Sandra Pesicic is asking, why do you think tall hoods are raised in Nogi? Or if you think they're raised in Nogi? Um, why are they rare? I guess they're like... If you do attack toe holds, like say if, um, if I were to attack a toe hold, say if I was ever playing Bella Eva, you potentially turn that into a, a beer and bowl and attack my back. So I think uh, toe holds are rare. I don't think, uh, I think there's definitely a place for it, but as long as both my feet are in sort of this outside position here. If I can get both my legs outside, so I think that's a more realistic position to get a toe hold from. I need to control the hips. Otherwise, guys will be attacking uh, beer and bolas. Like if, <coughs> if Isaac were attacking this toe hold, you can see he gives me the ability to get behind him and attack the back. So I think they're rare just because people are worried about getting their back taken. But I think it's safe from that because we've got two feet on the same side. Okay, so one more here, last one. So could you break down the outside heel hook to inside heel hook transition? You receive the user to in at grappling users? Yeah, oh, the one, uh, the team spray one? I think that's what I it's think called. that's probably the one, right? Um, so. Yeah, so, so I guess. Zach got um, so I guess what I was trying to think with uh, Team Spriggs is um, Team Spriggs is probably not going to counter leg lock me. I should be careful saying that he might do that at Kasai. But uh, I guess the guy at Team Spriggs who I think is probably going to be pretty evasive, bouncing in, bouncing back out, getting out of, the, out of there at any sign of trouble. I wouldn't be playing your traditional uh, single leg X or X guard style because I think uh, 
he has a better ability to sprint out. So against a guy like Spriggs, I was using more of a traditional rake, which might leave me a little more vulnerable. Guys could attack uh, a 12 hole or something. But against a guy like Spriggs, it's going to attach me better. And that's the main problem with these evasive grapplers is that uh, I have to attach myself to them in a way that um, keeps me locked in long enough to attack their legs. So I was trying to explain with Spriggs. I'll go ahead and meet you. So against Spriggs, I was able to get to his leg because pretty uh, earlier in the match, I did attack this arm and I, uh, I assume I did some damage to his elbow, so he wasn't able to meaningfully continue to block my leg entries with this arm. This arm was out of the equation at that point. So I've come under, I've elevated Spriggs, he stood up, and I've landed with a, come back a step, I've landed with a traditional repit. So I'm really just locking myself onto Spriggs. Spriggs has turned to pull his knee out, and I've unlocked my legs. And I'm, at, I'm attaching myself to this leg initially with a double grip, trying to prevent him trying to pull his knee out into the floor. This grip's pretty strong. And what Tim Spriggs did at this point was try to sit on me with his butt. So my foot here is giving me some space here. And when he pushes into me and I push back with this leg, it actually gives me the ability to elevate my hips. Once my hips are higher and his knees in place, come this way, right? So I push as he pushes right. Look what happens to my hips. My hips come off the ground and I can rotate from square, almost like a knee bar. I can pull his foot cross body and we can attack our inside heel hook here. So really Spriggs got a bit stuck at this range here. So initially we had this reap because I'm trying to attach myself. Spriggs started to sit on me and I unlock my feet. I use this leg to elevate the hips and I hang onto the leg it'll cause initially with a double grip and then more of an Achilles style knee bar grip. And I use the push to elevate and swing and we get this nice knee penetration and we can attack the, out, uh, the inside heel hook here. So Craig again, uh, Luke Du is asking, is he doing another DVD? So maybe if you can... So uh, that's, the, that's the guy who first of all did the meme. He did the meme? Yes, yeah, so congratulations him. Congratulations on the meme, that was definitely uh, my favorite meme. One of the kinder ones too, actually. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we're doing another DVD. We're sort of doing a, I guess, a bit of a follow-up to the initial leg lock one. Doing some new strategies. Obviously, the game has changed a little bit. People have some different strategies. So yeah, we're looking for more counter leg locks, counter back takes, and stuff. And then uh, also the sparring device over, right? Yes, I keep forgetting. We're going to be doing an analysis of all the sparring you guys saw today. So. Uh, We'll go back and talk about some of the strategies I had to use against the uh, various styles I faced today. And then Tyler Martin is, thanks for giving me the third place, uh, Craig. I think you got a third place in the contest, right? <laughs> uh, no uh, I mean, Tyler Martin. <laughs> That's awesome. Second place. I remember that was particularly named. So I, I, <laughs> I like that as well. Yeah, so. I have a question you, about the leg drag. How you, from the leg drag, you went for the inside. Back to the legs. The leg drag. Yeah, we were um, from here, right? Yes, I had the leg drag and then you went. You had the leg drag on Yes. Me. Yeah, he leg dragged you and you like inverted. And yeah, you inverted and, and, and then. You your leg back inside uh, and attacked the saddle in some form. Do you want to come and put me in the same yes. leg drag? So... Which side was it? This side? It was this side, yes. I was here. Then you inverted. And I went for this one. So let's see. You're coming in. Come back underneath. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm just trying to uh, get your body weight on top, right? I need to keep you uh, floating. I'm hanging onto this like almost like a. Uh, Craig, we're trying to get the camera to go back a little bit. Oh, no, Is this far? Yeah, but you have to turn around so you can see it. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm trying to hang on to this. Like, I guess the uh, debate here is as though you're thinking I'm trying to uh, pull your foot out and get it through. But I find that pretty unrealistic because you see you've got, you got such good penetration with the toes here. So I try and really use this grip and the backwards pressure to pull you on top of me and bring my right hand underneath. And what I'm trying to do is get some penetration to this knee. And almost like we're going to an X-guard style here. I think what you did was 
sat over my head with this like, yeah, I was able to get my head outside and throw it back there. So really it was sort of, we're focusing off the scramble there. I'm trying to get you back on pose. Oh, okay. I'm really trying to get that leg drag knee back inside. I don't want to take the pose. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yep. So you've used the word strategy a bunch of times. The DVD that's coming out on BJJFanatics.com is uh, strategy based. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you keep using the word strategy. Is that because in all these weird, you know, whatever you end up in positions, it, it does kind of have to be rules, not necessarily one set technique all the time. Yeah, definitely. All my uh, all my strategies are really based on uh, who my opponent is and what my opponent's skill set. So I really, uh, I never try and think of myself as like, <clears throat> what's my best move from Ziga? Where do I go from this position? It all, it all really comes down to who my opponent is. So we obviously want all the tools to be able to do all the different strategies from that position, all the different tactics, I guess, all the different moves. But I really have to be intelligent with the strategy, you know what I mean? Like uh, against, against really uh, good wrestlers, really evasive grapplers, I need to do everything I can to get a solid attachment on the leg locks and try and have faith that uh, we're gonna strategize out of there, knowing that we're better at the leg lock game. Whereas someone that's maybe a more technical leg locker, I don't need to be so tight as more getting them floating on top and looking to attack. Because uh, they're probably looking to counter me as well. So we, we're both entering the exchange, so I don't need to spend as much time holding on. Makes sense. Can you show the Dale Hewitt foot lock you did on Boogie? Well, I, I had to ask. <laughs> that was brutal. Boogie man's gonna hate me. <laughs> I, had, I had to ask because I've tried and failed plenty of times with it. Oh, uh, really? That was brutal. Uh, the foot, so Boogie man, uh, straight ankle lock, right? Is, I will say this, I used to use this move a lot in the gi, and it is easier in the gi because we got this collar grip. And the move involves me getting my hips off the ground, right? So you can see, no gi, I have to use my foot on their leg. But uh, I really, they need to be pushing weight back into me with this foot to give me the lift. Otherwise, if I kick this leg and I move backwards, I get no hip elevation, they just move away from me. So the benefit of the gi is, if you pretend Isaac has the gi, I can use the gi to pull myself up. So with Boogie, when we pulled, I pulled De La Hiva on him, right? And what I did was initially the De La Hiva grip, face this way. Can you push back a little bit? So we wanted to want an Achilles grip, like your typical De La Hiva. I reached elbow deep. I want to get my elbow around the Achilles instead. So we're going elbow deep and grabbing that inner thigh. Boogeyman was pressuring. That meant he was squaring up. So he was squaring up, and that gave me the ability to push off that leg, get my hip thigh, and my hand switches from the inner thigh back in front of my hip here. So we've got this little pummel with elevated hips and my hand just sits in front of the hip. As we make this transition, I relieve the Dela Hiva hook, put my hips back to the floor, and we bring this outside foot back inside. I don't want to leave it floating, because we're very vulnerable to a leg drag. So I bring it back inside and hook. So that protects us against the leg drag, also gives this ability to knock them on their butt. So we stretch their far leg, and I ax down into their knee with the foot that was initially in the Dela Hiva. Once they're on their butt, I want to follow and get weight back over the top. I want to put as much weight into this foot as possible. So I drop my hip onto that foot, and my elbow comes close to the hip. So initially, I was up on my elbow, but this is not a very tight position. I want to get weight on the foot. So I use my outside leg to stomp and drop a lot of weight into the foot. And from here, we're just going to finish it like your typical straight ankle look. But the beauty is because the De La Hiva hook is behind their knee, it's difficult for them to put the boot on, which is, I guess, the traditional straight ankle lock defense. And we can get a good pressure into the back there. Because <clears throat> that was the, uh, I guess it's called the boogeyman. <laughs> so, oh, Craig, so one question. How, how did you learn all of this living in Australia, you know, like? Yeah. And, and, and not, that, not that long ago, right? Like, you, you were purple belt three years ago? Yeah, I was uh, purple belt that qualified for ADCC when I shouldn't have because I was in Asia and it's a bit easier there at the time. So I was worried about getting heel hooked myself after watching Pal Harris destroy people's legs. <laughs> and, uh, I just went on YouTube trying to figure it out, obviously watching the Danaher guys, trying to reverse engineer what they're doing online. 
Really so we watched a lot of videos online. Lots of videos online, yeah. I would say uh, throughout my whole jiu-jitsu career, because I was in a small city, there wasn't, I didn't have access to world-class instruction or anything. All I had was uh, training partners to drill with and instructional DVDs. This was uh, maybe back in like 2012, 2013. I think one of the first DVDs I really drilled properly and didn't just watch was the Meow DVD, because we were trying to learn the beer and bolo and that was like uh, advanced physics to us back then. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. So we were uh, like a huge believer that watching videos online can definitely help. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I mean, you, I, for me, there was no alternative. You know, I don't think there's a, a really an excuse anymore to say you don't have access to high uh, quality instruction because it's all, it's all online, it's all available. All you guys can buy it, uh, DVDs. So whether or not you're at an elite level club, all the information's there. No one's really keeping secrets anymore. Everyone's put it out in DVDs. Right. Is there too. a website you like more than the others for DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one website, BGJ Fanatics. <laughs> so, I think that's good, right? So, thanks so much, Craig. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Craig.